some some water all over. I've got a little bit of tilt on the board. It's not too tilted because obviously we're going pretty pretty wet here. Um, and obviously if it's too tilted, then it's just going to run straight off your board. So I'm just sloshing this absolutely everywhere. Not really being very careful. There we are. Oh, no. I've just dropped my masking fluid into my paint. Oh, oh dear. No. That wasn't very oh. clever, Sue. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's all right. Oh, my <laughs> kitty heart. Sorry. It's all over the chair. Right. <laughs> Good start to the day then. Indeed. <laughs> okay, so that's really, really wet now. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to sort of percolate. I'll start mixing up my first colours and then we'll, we'll make a start. So the first colour I'm going to use will be some, um, uh, let's go with something a bit warmer. Let's go with, let me just put a bit of the spray. I'm going to use some Englishy type red, which is sort of the brick red. <laughs> Or if you don't have that, then you could use like burnt sienna or something um, similar. And into that, I'm going to put some um, cerulean blue. So it's going to make a sort of a greyish colour. So that's one of my warm cools. And then I'll also have something a bit brighter as well, perhaps a bit more um, like sienna. That's quite nice. A bit of sienna as well. So a very ochery yellow. In the same mix? No, 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 it's a separate mix. A separate mix. Yeah. So let's just start to chuck some of this on. That's a bit browny. Let's go a bit bluer. A bit more um, uh, cerulean in that. So we'll put some of that on. A bit warmer. So a bit more, um, let's go a tiny bit of red into that mix. There we go, a bit more red, a bit more cerulean. Sorry, did you say what colour you're doing now? So one side's the blue and red mix, is it? And the other side's the opera? Yep, so there's a little bit of ochre in this side and more red and blues that side. Okay, and then um, we're going to go a bit more golden, so I'm going to use some transparent yellow as I'm coming down into the kind of brighter area. So I want some transparent yellow through here. <coughs> Pop a little bit of that down there. Right now at the bottom I want to go a lot bluer. So I'm going to dip into now some um, cobalt blue. So it's quite thin cobalt blue. Bring some of this in at the bottom here. Let that bleed and run. Bring that all the way into the boat because the boat's going to be pretty much in shadow most of it. More cerulean in there. Bring some of that in. So the cerulean can mix with the um, the yellow quite nicely and go slightly green, which would be quite nice. Can even bring some of that up into those areas. A bit more cerulean over this right hand side, coming all the way down. Right. Now I need to see if there's any lift out that I need to do before this dries off. So I'm going to take a, another brush. Make sure it's clean. Just wiping out on some tissue paper here just to clean it off. And I'm going to just see if there's anything. Right. So some of these buildings back here that are pretty light, I'm just going to wipe. A little bit of this colour off. Not all of it, just, just so it's a bit lighter. 
and we can have a bit behind the in here where it's a bit lighter behind the van might even just knock out a few spots here and there perhaps one of those buildings can be lighter a few bits back there not too much some of the um english red so like brick red or, or um, if you don't have that use burnt sienna to make up kind of a gray browny gray color i'm going to put a reasonable amount of water in there i don't want it too light but it's going to be a little bit light for the moment because give us room to go darker go darker go darker yeah absolutely go darker. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to start to just block in, thinking about these as um, just big rectangles, really. <clears throat> just big rectangular shapes, cutting around my um, windows. So this be <coughs> one of the buildings. Kind of coming down. And as it comes down, I'm just going to dip in slightly more burnt yet uh, certainly more paints gray so it's darker at the bottom than it is at the top of the building coming through <coughs> give it a bit more change in tone so there's one and then i can follow that through <coughs> into my next building which is directly next to it obviously just nick a bit of that colour. <coughs> Coming through to the edge of the roof. Just again, leave a few little rectangular shapes for the windows. <coughs> Doesn't have to be too too neat. Um, but just try and make them one above the other is usually a good idea. <laughs> just so that they don't look too out of place. They're not all one above the other. Some of them are actually... Um, wonky. Wonky, yeah. Wonky, wonky. <laughs> wonky windows, but, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go a bit more brown. Yeah. More Payne's grey at the bottom of this window. So, oh, sorry, window, I mean building. Come up there. Bit browner in that one. Gonna mop some of this up. A lot of paint at the bottom there. Just tidy up that bottom edge. And then I can follow that through into this next section, which is over here. And then we've got a edge of a roof there. <coughs> so I'm really just trying to see these as um, large shapes rather than individual buildings and try and paint them as I see them. Bit of cerulean in this one, just to vary it. Coming down through there. So we've got the crane top about there, and then we can come underneath, underneath the cranes. I'm gonna leave a few gaps for where the crane's gonna come. And then some little broken shapes in there. A few dots and breaks of color. Bit darker under here over where the van is and actually we can actually paint in the whole front of our van because that's the same tone same color pretty much get that in coming down all the way to where the wheels are get those in And then equally, there's a few darker shapes just behind the van. Yeah. Put a few of those 
That's not colours in. Hmm. Yeah. Then we come across to where we got a few <laughs> dark shapes over here. There's a car actually over here, but I'm going to not make it a car. I'm just going to make it a dark shape. English red. Oh, Are you putting the people in, Stuart? I will be putting people in. Yeah. But not with um, this. Right. Not just yet. No, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll do that as a separate little. Right, thing. I'll leave that then. <laughs> yeah. And then this building actually is going to be quite dark on this right hand side. All right, let's paint all of that in. The whole thing's dark, so let's put a dark shape in there. Coming down then into our, uh, our wall. A uh, little bit of change of colour, slightly greener now, sort of grey green into our wall shape. Picking up on some of these, trying to link some of these dark colours into the wall. Coming down. And then we need to cut around, so we're going to cut around our boat. So the shape of the boat here, we're going to leave that unpainted. I'm actually going to take a brush whilst this wash is wet and just run some water at the bottom of the wall just to let that paint creep down and we don't get a hard line at the bottom of the, um, the harbour wall. So again, I'll do the same on this side, just put some water through there. So when the wash meets it, it will just um, creep out a little bit. Link into where the car wheels are, or the van wheels, I should say. Coming across, coming down. I've actually put another little figure in my boat there, so I'm gonna cut round him. Bit of blue into this. A bit more blue, I should say, cerulean blue. In here, just for a bit more color few spots over there as well. Cutting around my little um, which red boys, which are going to go in later. Comes all the way to about here and then it goes very, very warm. So I'm going to go actually very orange. I'm going to dip into some reds and oranges, make it pretty strong. on the edge of the harbour wall. So it comes down into all those nice browns that we've already established. I'm gonna go over my tires because they're gonna go in uh, darker. So they're all gonna be a lot, lot darker down to the bottom and then it will just run away into the water. Right top edge of the harbour wall, it's a bit heavy, so I'm gonna break that up a little bit. Take a slightly smaller brush, just make it damp, not wet, just damp. And I'm just gonna break it up so it's not a totally straight line. Just pull that colour up a little bit into some of those shapes. And then take a bit more tissue, just mop up some of these bits here. Stop them being too solid. Okay, and then same one, that's a bit solid. Just mop some of those up. I'm gonna take that same orangey color now, the orangey, um, light orangey color, and put that through some of this roof line. We've got some chimney coming down around. Again, just a just a shape coming down to the existing area. Follow that through, perhaps a little bit of paint grey in it as well. Not too, it's quite so orange. A bit more slate colour. Run that right across the top of this one. 
Bring that down to the existing wash. And then on the left hand side, it's a bit bluer. And more the cerulean again. A little bit of grey in it. Just run that down here. Going in the other direction. On that building. Because that one's going to be pretty white. <clears throat> okay. Then the boat itself in the shadow is going to be fairly red. So what I might do there is I'm going to wet the whole bottom of the boat in the water, so underneath the hull. Put some water through there. Underneath? Yeah, underneath the boat, not in the boat, under, underneath the boat. Um, clean water ideally. Yeah. And then in the boat itself, take some reds. Maybe clean reds, hopefully. Dark red? Just sort of a cadmium red, I think. Because oh. we're going to put some shadow over it afterwards. So uh, I, don't it, I don't want to make it too dull. No. So just coming all the way down to where we've already put that water. And then the bottom of the boat should stay really soft when it hits that water edge. And then we should have a crisper top edge and a sharper bottom edge. Uh. Let's just take that up there a little bit higher into those edges there. That's fine. And then we can probably leave that left-hand side there now just to dry. I'm going to wash that away. We don't have too much of a line there. Okay, okay moving over to the right hand side now while that's still drying. I'm going to put the hull of the larger boat in. I'm going to do the same, same thing. I'm going to wet underneath. So in fact, I'm going to wet the majority of the hull apart from this top edge. So maybe about halfway up the hull of the boat, I'm going to put some water through it. And then down into the water itself. Plus the reflection. So I've only wet it about halfway up the hull of the boat, okay? And then I'm going to take just some Payne's Grey. Fairly strong. And start to drop that in. Remembering that we need to try and keep the shape of the of the boat um, fairly fairly right. I'm just going to bring that down to the waterline and then just let that fade or bleed into the water. Okay, just let that do whatever it's going to do. And I'm just going to mop up the edge just to keep it soft. Like so. <clears throat> so we can let that dry now. <clears throat> Lifting out a little bit of um, paint there. Now I'm going to put in the far harbour wall now. <clears throat> so taking my lighter browny colours. So the um, burnt sienna, the um, bit of blue to make it slightly greyer. And I'm just going to run a bit of water through the back wall and down into the water a bit to give it room to bleed into. 
just through there all the way across into the distance take the color drop it in at the top through the boat into the background there tidy up that a bit So a bit thicker colour in, in this time, just to get a bit more tone in there. More blue. The cerulean blue, by the way, I'm using here. Just breaking the edge as well, so it's not totally straight. Just to suggest perhaps there's some vehicles or something on that, on the top of the edge of that wall. Some of that in there. There we go, a bit of cerulean blue. We'll have some ochre, a little bit of ochre. Just in a few of them. Perhaps one there, a few spots here and there. Bit of ochre. Uh, we'll have some a bit of grey. Ridiculous. We're putting a bit of Payne's grey into that ochre. So as long as we keep the um, the tops fairly straight, the building should hopefully emerge. Once, <laughs> oh, once this is very funny. All painted. Oh, okay, so coming funny. down. Then I'm going to go a bit more brown on the end buildings. So some burnt sienna, because they're very warm, these buildings over here. Up into these shapes, oh, that way. So just popping in all of this side of the boat. And this comes out. That's on dry. Yeah, just on, because I want to keep some of the detail okay. um, of the railings here. Don't want to lose all of that. And this comes forwards into this part where there's some more railings and it goes a bit warmer there. So I'm going to go browner again as we come into the boat here. And then it's very, very blue. Some more cerulean again. Perhaps even a little bit of turquoise as well. I don't know. I'm not looking. I'm... <laughs> so, just bringing some bright blues into this area. Um, around that big mast thing that we've got going on there. Just even let it creep into there as well a little bit. Perhaps there's a little bit more blue at the front here as well. We'll have some blue shapes just to get the front of the boat to be a little bit easier to see. Some blues up here. A little bit on the roof line. Oh, there is actually a boat behind that boat. That's why it's a bit confusing. Yes. So I think we'll ignore that. Yeah, it sailed away. You see. Yeah, I think we'll we'll leave that one. Now I'll have to make it up. <laughs> yeah, make it up, Maggie. Go on, free, free your mind. Yes. As Sue probably knows, I'm good at looking at the planning and then thinking, oh, I think I'll make it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to take that same blue and I'm going to put it into these boats over here now. 
get these to start to show up. A little, a little gap for um, for these boats that are kind of in front of it. Take some of that same blue right into the distance here. Into these boats. We've got some of this blue up here. I think these are like bins actually, but we'll just put them in. Some of these shapes that we've got going on up on the wall. A bit more blue there. I will even have some, this can be quite blue because it's going to be in shadow once it's painted. Make that quite dark or we will make that dark. A few other bits of blue there. And then I'm going to put in a bit of a bit more grey and some colour into the window of that first boat. And in the reference, it's actually reflecting the colour of the boat behind it. But I'm going to put a bit of the, the wall colour into the window because it's actually we haven't put the second boat in, so it needs to reflect some of the colour of the the brick wall that's behind it. So I just mixed up a greeny gray, a, this kind of wall color that we, we used originally. Oh yeah. yeah. And I'm just gonna put that into this window. <coughs> Make it fairly, fairly blue, this front boat. So we're gonna paint him on, um, on dry, but I'm also gonna add um, in the light area so that the shadow is not too crisp. So this little patch where it's going to be very light, I'm just going to wet the edge of the shadow um, just to stop it being too, too sharp. And I'm going to start to bring my blue colour for, um, for the boat in. Remembering to try and keep the uh, the shape of the hole as we want it. Uh, the zigzag kind of comes down the seat and then into the base, it comes across more blue, it comes across. And then it comes round into the bow of the boat. So that's like the inside of the boat. The outside of the boat is going to be more Payne's grey. I'm going to go a bit more less colourful. So greys and um, into the grey. Let's make it a bit greeny. So greeny grey. And same process where the bottom of the boat is meeting the water i'm just going to wet the edge just to stop the shadow from being so oh, sorry the reflection for being too solid and then we could bring the gray in and this is going to come all the way around here sorry Stuart, did you just water the front bow of the boat so we've just put water into the reflection area. That inside yeah. is just cobalt blue. So here's cobalt blue. Right. And a little bit of the um, the turquoise in it. Ah, right. Okay. Just a tiny right. bit, not much. Yeah. yeah no, looking at it and thinking it was a bit bright for cobalt. Yeah, it's just um, got a tiny bit of the... Uh, what do you call it the turquoise in it yeah let's yeah. just bring this shadow down a bit more drop in these colors into the shadow area this is kind of like the reflection area really all the way through to the front perhaps i have a little bit of a couple of ropes hanging off the back there 
bit more of that dark around this right hand side, the left hand side of the bow. Got this sort of, I don't know what it is, whether it's a <coughs> rubber or something on that edge that's making it darker. I need to bring that across. I've lost my little bit of light there, but never mind, I'll have to put that back in. Oh, just mucked it up. They're coming down the boat there. Now we'll leave that to sort itself out. Coming back to the red boat. In fact, let's get the windows in our main boat next. I might as well just take that same grey green colour. A bit more water in it. <coughs> side windows in. And also the <coughs> at the front one just underneath that boy which we're going to put in later so to put those windows in <coughs> and then i need to establish so with some bluey grays this boat that's sort of half in shadow and half out of the shadow i'm just going to run the shadow over that edge and it's very very dark so I need to go more brown grey at the bottom of this boat <coughs> just start to run that down because the reflection is actually going to go along the edge of that brick wall soften that off okay so now I'm going to put in the these brighter lighter shapes on on the um, the back of the the red boat and for that I'm going to need to use um, some thicker paint because it needs to be a bit brighter and I'm going to make these ones um, kind of a yellow so I'm just dipping into my orangey yellows here and then I'm going to put some of this colour on to these boys hey, show. Oh, bless you. <laughs> thank you oh, oh dear never worth Okay, over there. Yeah. Uh, that season. Yeah. Let's put these shapes in. And then I have to come back probably with some shadow afterwards to make these knock them down a bit. Just get those colours in. That comes pretty much to about here. And then mm. we'll there. <clears throat> and then a few of those also on on this boat just to break the edge up. So I might have one about here. I'm sure it's gonna to need to go a lot stronger. And a few bits of colour just overhanging that edge. That will do that for the moment. Put the lid back on that. And now I'm going to get the shadow coming through this building and then start to pick out some of the shapes and also get this greeny kind of colour up in the hill line. Um. And take my netting off then and see what we've got. <clears throat> So I'm going to mix up a green first and for that I'm going to use, um, let's just get some tissue, clean this off. This needs to be quite a clean colour. I don't want it to be too dirty. I'm going to use some clean water, some 
transparent yellow or lemon yellow if you haven't got transparent yellow. And a little bit of cerulean in there. It's kind of a limey, limey green. Okay. I'm going to wet the area behind the roof line. So re-wet this area in here up to the netting and over the netting or if you've got tissue paper then you might want to wet into the tissue paper a bit so i'm going around my edge of the roofs the foreground roofs i should say just with this water coming down to the edge oops try not to go over that roof Go around that roof there. So all the way to the right hand side. We're leaving, oh, just covered that one up, never mind. <laughs> just a little bit of that water. And then I'm gonna to start to drop in my, my greens. Pretty strong. And I want them fairly limey. Doing it from the top. Uh, a bit more yellow, a bit more blue, all the way across this area. Okay. So the greens really are going to help the roofs kind of stand out. to the side. Coming down. Okay. And then before that dries, I might just take some red or the Englishy red. <coughs> And just pop in a few edges to these roofs so they can kind of bleed together a little bit. But where these roofs are meeting the, gr the green of the, the tree line. Excuse me, Stuart. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. you wet that area before you painted it? Which area, sorry? The green. Yes. What you're doing? Did, okay, yeah. thank you. <sighs> Do a lot of sighing today, George. Why is that? <laughs> is it your wife? Is it the wife getting to you? Is it? Yes. Um, <laughs> a bit more yellow ochre. Lately, you're doing your bit. Are you doing your bit? Just run that through this roof. Get those roof lines in. And then I need to just put a bit of colour onto these right hand roofs as well whilst we're at it. Just take that same orangey yellows. Just do this on dry because it's um, a bit further away back here. I'm not too worried about these really. Just put some colour on there, but it's a bit more paint. Back to bigger brush. Clean the brush off. So for the shadow colour, it's going to go because um, we've got quite a nice bit of yellow. An orange, it needs to be sort of a bluish, slightly verging on the purpley, not purple purple. No, not purple. Blue. <laughs> not in Cornwall. No. No, they don't agree with purple, it's going to religion in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> it's your religion. 
don't have, yeah, that have purples. Goodness. Connotations to your past life. What did you say, Maggie? Purple's got dangerous connotations to your previous life. Yes, I'm afraid it has. <laughs> I'm afraid it has. I'll tell you one day, all of you. Oh, I did. <laughs> Terrible. Right, so I'm taking um, um, really quite nice strong blue which is kind of a phthalo blue type colour um, and into that I'm going to put a teeny bit of crimson just a tiny bit just to knock some of the blueness out of it and this is going to be sort of my start of my shadow colour let's see what this is like it might be too blue but we'll give it a go that might be right it's going to be pretty blue so let's go for it so we're going to bash all this in so it comes across the we're going to have some shapes in here coming across the wall so the shadow comes all the way um, through this area perhaps it could be casting some i don't know some scaffolding or bits and pieces over that building comes down underneath that edge going to come through some of these little figures which i'll get in in a minute it's going to go up the side of this van so the van's all going to be in shadow under the van Maybe the van's getting a little bit of light cast across the top down the back side of it across the front here Stuart, I put a lot of masking fluid over that way area you've just painted. Should I take it all off and then do what you're doing now? Um, when you say masking fluid, what large swathes of it or little spots? Um, windows. <laughs> um, if they're windows, then maybe you could leave that for the moment and then do all this shadow and then peel it off. Um, okay. That might be one way of doing it. Okay. Um, but if it's large, big patches, then yeah, you might, might need to take it no, off. No, no, it's not large patches at all. It's just sort of bit. Okay. Right, I'll leave it then. So I'm just going to put a few little, um, I don't know, maybe it's like a step or a few verticals just to break this wall up. I'm going to put a bit more Payne's Grey in that to go darker. Pretty dark at the bottom of this wall. The bottom of this wall is going to go very dark, which will help our boat to show up as well. Uh, coming into here, a little bit darker there, and then come round our boat front underneath. Nice dark, perhaps there's a dark piece just showing up in the window really quite dark in the background here behind my little figure maybe he's got a black top on let's give him a black top there we go um <laughs> coming around these little shapes again a few more verticals just to link the top to the bottom darker those wheels of the van Oh, God. I'm going to use my paint's grey and the blue again, same two colours, keeping it pretty rich. And I'm going to do this on dry paper over the top of what I've already got here. So just this kind of rubbery stuff, I don't even know what it is, but around this boat, get that edge in. Get some of these marks down the side in here. Can pop in that little corner of the boat there. Front bow. Maybe even a little indication of the curvature of the boat as it goes away. Again, some of those little bits of rope perhaps hanging off the side. Then coming over to our main vessel, 
going to just put a bit stronger drawing into the front. It's got a little bit lost here. And that kind of comes down there. This is not very straight, so I need to straighten that up. I can bring that angle in and in a way. A bit darker. Not all too near. on the front of the boat. Pick out some darker shapes, I think, on the top of the boat because it's all getting a bit muddled up here. So let's just put in or invent just a few little marks just to help show up where the actual cabin line is. So we don't get totally lost. Maybe darken up in the window a bit. A few slightly darker marks down into the water, little ripples in this same tone. <clears throat> with the reflections obviously it's fairly important to um kind of break up edges not make shapes feel too solid um to give the feeling that it's it's watery rather than just a mirror because there's a little bit of um, waviness to some of these edges. They're not totally straight. I'm just going to try and indicate some of that in these washes. You also sometimes get like little fishes come up and poke the red, so you get the little, mm. oh. you know, circular ripples, and they're not always straight. They're sometimes curved. And we just have a few of the shapes down here. Just to indicate the movement in the water. Coming back, let's break that edge up there. Leave a few gaps for the light to sort of work its way through. 